بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى The Master of the whole universe and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the Messenger of Allah We are sending our blessings and our salutations to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his entire house and also to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear respected brothers and sisters, welcome to uh, the live session again. And as we promised that inshallah we are going to have the joint lecture between the Islamic Center of New Perichi and also Masjid Salam in Dunedin. We welcome everyone. We welcome the brothers and sisters from the two communities. And as we have, alhamdulillah, Imam Muhammad Yahya as usual, he, he, we are hosting him today in um, uh, uh, our community in New Purichi. So first of all, we welcome Imam Muhammad Yahya by saying first of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my honor to be here today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and help us to do our best to get all the communities, I mean the community of Newport Richie and the community of Dunedin together inshallah so that we can elevate our Iman and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, I mean, we are also so happy to have Imam Muhammad Yahya too and uh, inshallah we need our brothers and sisters to interact with the decision and uh, again if you have any question inshallah uh, you could uh, uh, post your question and we will answer inshallah your questions during the session inshallah or even after the session uh, through the, com the comments that we will put in the video inshallah let me first inshallah uh, tell you about the topic of today what is the topic of the, the the session today we are going to talk about the types of nafs the types of one's self the types of the the, the nafs that you have in your body inside you and as we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the instructions in the Quran to take care of our nafs and to develop our nafs and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the command in the Quran to have a good relationship with Allah that will make our nafs in a good condition in a good shape too and today I want just to share the moment with Imam Muhammad Yahya also about the, the nafs Imam Muhammad. What do you think about the nafs? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran about the nafs itself? Uh, first off, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Wa ba'du fa inni ahmadullah subhanahu wa ta'ala alladhi yassar lana al liqa al-an wa asaluhu subhanahu an yusaddida lisanana wa an yu'inana wa iyaakum ala al-haqqi wa an yulhimana jami'an al-sawab والعمل لصالح وجهه الكريم اسمح لي أولا أن أعرض هذه النقطة في عجالة باللغة العربية أن الله سبحانه وتعالى قسم النفس في القرآن العظيم إلى ثلاثة أقسام تستطيع أن تقول إن هذه الأقسام بشكل تدرجي يعني من الأقل أقصد من الأقل يعني من النفس التي هي أبعد ما تكون عن الله سبحانه وتعالى ثم ثم صعودا إلى النفس التي تستمتع بطاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى أولا النفس الأمارة بالسوء ثانيا النفس النفس اللوامة ثالثا النفس المطمئنة So we, we could find in the Quran how Allah سبحانه وتعالى divided this نفس When we say the word نفس I'm pretty sure that all the, the people who are following us right now they understand the, the, the point of the word نفس which oneself that we have inside our bodies uh, as you said uh, at the beginning yeah. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we have three divides uh, or three uh, portions for nafs the first one is an nafsul ammaratu bisu as we said and also an nafsul lawama and number three is an nafsul mutmainna I'm sure that inshallah in these few minutes we'll, we'll come to cover all these three inshallah just I wanted to share before going to the, the three types of nafs and before telling about uh, what are the types of nafs? What are how we can improve ourselves to develop and to uh, uh, try to elevate our iman and our rank of iman? Imam Muhammad Masa people, you know, when when it comes to the, the their bodies, they take care of their bodies. You know, they try to beautify their bodies. 
they try to put you know the, the, to to buy the expensive materials to take care of their bodies yeah such as some you know for our sisters the, when they buy the makeup or all this stuff the perfume we need most of people are taking care of the external image the external appearance mm -hmm. okay but when it comes to the internal one this is what we need to look for yeah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the prophet muhammad sallallahu mentioned inna allaha la yanzuru ila suwarikum yeah. wala ila ajisadikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum yeah. allah does not look to your appearance allah does not look to your you know your car your wealth what type of clothes that you have what type of brand that you have but allah is looking to your heart your nafs your souls inside you so when we say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just look to your heart what do you expect from a muslim uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in a body and soul all of us know alhamdulillah how to feed our bodies by eating and drinking and having this stuff that we cover our bodies with good clothes and this is also this uh, this is added from halal means it's okay yeah even that, uh, but, we, know but, that but allah, we are talking about the main concern yeah yeah i mean that allah jamil and muhibbul jamal allah yeah. is beautiful and love those who, who, who are trying to beautify themselves yeah it's something we can't go on the street like uh, to be uh, uh, like as we say and, mm -hmm. and our uh, hair is going here and like here. dusty and all this yeah, stuff. yeah we have to to get ourselves clean to get ourselves tidy and to get everything okay but still we need also to know how to feed our soul and how to feed our body and this is the way to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we care about the the inside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let uh, our uh, outside to be good towards people and towards him subhanahu wa ta'ala and and the, the, the next point also that we want to share with the brothers and sisters about your nafs what is inside you yourself what is inside we, when we are talking about certain feelings like when we talk about the grudge envy about hating about you know uh, uh, having kind of evil so look at these characteristics look at these you know features and attributions when it comes to these attributions it is something bad to have in human in human being yeah. but when it comes to the opposite side like generosity, loving and caring and sharing the good things and be kind with we be kind with everyone and to have the contemplation in your salah to be satisfied with the destiny of Allah. All these issues, all these attributes, we are talking about the good one, the good nafs. So when you have to ask yourself, do you know your nafs? Yeah. Do you know which type is? You know, do you know which level you are in? When it comes to the nafs itself, sometimes we are taking care. I'm talking about the the the, the it's, it's it's to take care of, of your body. That's something good. Yeah. And Islam ordered us to do that. But I'm talking about your priority, the main concern. What is what is your main concern? You know, Imam. Yeah. And, and to be genuine, also, and to be honest with uh, with you, uh, dear brothers and sisters, that uh, I could say that each and every body has these three types inside himself. <laughs> that sometimes yes to be honest yes. all of us sometimes we we have the the desire to do something bad you know out of uh, uh, human desire of human weakness or something mm -hmm. uh, all of us we at a point in time we do mistake and we do some sin and we know how to get back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, so we are yeah, human beings yes so you have the first nafs which is al amara to besu and also sometimes we alhamdulillah we blame ourselves for doing bad and at a point in time we enjoy the worship and how to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We enjoy remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we could say that we have the three types inside ourselves. But now we are looking at this, this let's say, uh, uh, a battle inside our body. We want the, the, the victory to be for the nafs al So this is, this is the way now. Let's say that we have a person who has nafs amara, means a bad nafs, bad one which is committing the sins, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not uh, 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 respond to the commands of Allah, always doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to avoid. But now, 
Can that person be a good person one day? Of course. He can do that. Yeah. So what he needs to do. This is, this is I think, one of the points that we are going to share by the end of the lecture. How you can improve yourself. And how can you do something good to, to improve your, your nafs and change, change it from a certain status to another one. So, okay? yes, uh, if you want to improve yourself and to keep yourself away from doing mistakes and even to seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first off, you have to know that you are doing something bad and you are doing mistakes and you are having a lot of shortcomings. Don't ever justify your actions that, uh, like, I know that some people may say, okay, I'm human beings, I am weak, so uh, I'm doing something bad. This is correct in one way. What I mean is that we can, we could do, at a point in time, we could do something bad. But we, we can't say that, okay, I'm a human being, so I should do every mistake. No, we say that as I'm a human being, sometimes I do mistakes. So I don't just find to myself. So just admitting and acknowledging that you, that you committed the sins. The first step. So this is the first step. And this is one of the scholars actually said about... وَالْإِقْرَارُ بِذَنْبِ أَوَّلُ الْخُطُوَاتِ إِلَى التَّوْبَةِ yes. To admit, to acknowledge that you already committed the sins. To feel regret, to feel sorry that you made something, that you have shortcomings. It is the first step that you are on the way to elevate and to increase your level of Iman. Yeah, and this is also one of the conditions to have your uh, uh, tawbah, repentance, be accepted. To feel regret and sorry for what you have done in the past. Let me let me let me see if we have uh, some of the brothers also can share the time with us uh, and uh, know about the, the. This is what we uh, we would like the people. Uh, yeah, we fact, to we need our us brothers and, and sisters interact with us, yeah. to interact with us. And if you have any question, just please let me know and let us know so we can answer your questions too. Imam Muhammad, we talked about the bad nafs. Yeah. Or. The one who is continuously, you know, eager to commit the sin. And the scholar said, when we have a bad nafs, it may be in a, in, in a Muslim, but he is a disobedient to Allah. And it, of course, the bad nafs in the disbeliever himself. Yeah. But what about the other type? An nafsul lawama. What does it mean, first of all? Uh, this kind or this type of nafs is... Uh... For me, it's great because as you said now, the first step is to feel sorry and to admit and to acknowledge your mistake. So, so number two is to, to blame yourself for this mistake. Now we are going in the right path. So are you seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So it's not like most of people consider that the, the, the lawama or the blaming one, to that, that's something negative. No, it, no. it is positive. No, at all. As we should do mistakes, um, uh, as we said, we are human beings. And even the scholar said, let me say it first in Arabic, that النفس اللوامة هي التي تلوم صاحبها على الشر على فعل الشر وعلى الخير ربما تسأل يعني منطقيا أن تلوم صاحبها على الشر فكيف تلومه على الخير تلومه على الشر لماذا فعل وتلومه على الخير لماذا لم يستزد من هذا الخير So if we say that our nafs and our body and our heart blames us now and again every once in a while for what we are doing bad or mistakes to keep ourselves and to avoid this mistake and to have this uh, uh, let's say the highest rank of this type of nafs is also to blame yourself for the good actions how come if you just give a charity like ten dollars and you have the ability to to pay more and more you wish if it, if it, it was more yeah you just say for yourself oh, i wish i could pay more I wish I could pray uh, uh, 11 rakahs during night, not just two rakahs. I wish I could read one juz of the Quran, not just three pages or four pages. So if you blame yourself for good, to increase your good and for bad and for evil actions, to prevent it and to abandon it, now you are on the right path. You are walking and taking initiative step to reach the highest nafs, which is an nafsu al mutmainna So let, let, me, let me tell you the good news also about the brothers and sisters what the scholars said, most of the scholars said, like Imam Taymiyyah, Imam Al-Qayyim said, the majority of Muslims have the second type of nafs, the lawan. Like at the middle. Yes. yes. The majority of Muslims have this type, the second type of nafs, 
the nafs which is feeling regret, feeling sorry, and you start to blame yourself, why I made that, and as Imam Muhammad mentioned, why I missed that good thing, so, and, but there is something, one of the tricks of the shaitan, Imam, we, we just wanted to alert our brothers and sisters, one of the tricks of the shaitan, that shaitan keeps you in that situation, in that state of blaming yourself without taking any further step. Mm, yeah. What is, what is the further step that we need to have after blaming myself, after feeling regret? What else? To start to improve, to start to change your status. Let's say that when I meet, uh, uh, it's not me, alhamdulillah, I mean if some, uh, some brother talks to himself or to themselves, that when I meet the, uh, uh, those people, for example, and when I go to this place, I do something bad. Like, you know, smoking, drinking or something. So the first step is just to keep yourself away from this place itself, not just from the people. This so is, this, this is yes. kind of al akhd bil asbab لذلك أولا أن تبتعد عن مكان المعصية وأن تبتعد عن أسباب المعصية ذلك قال لنا علماؤنا الكرام أن تبتعد أولا عن أسباب المعصية The way to, to, to find yourself in this place Number one is to keep yourself away from this place to keep yourself away from any kind of you know uh, uh, doing something bad when I go to this place when I when I be my, by myself some people when in, you know that ذنوب الخلوات نسأل الله أن أن يعافينا when I'm sitting by myself, I may do something bad. Okay, I will not give myself this chance to do something bad. I'll try to call my friend. I'll try to, to, to read the Quran. I'll try to follow uh, some of the uh, sessions for Imam Ahmad, for so and so. So I'm trying to invest my time. I'm trying to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, actually, this is what happened even with the Sahaba themselves. You know, you know, brothers and sisters, Sahaba, when we talk about the Sahaba, we are talking about the best generation ever. Yep. This is what Rasulullah said in the hadith. Khayrul Quruni Qarni. The best generation ever is my generation. The generation who witnessed the life with Rasulullah. But you know, Imam, even those people who witnessed the, the, the prophecy and they, they accepted the message and they uh, followed the instructions of Rasulullah, yep. even those people, yep. they, they, were had, they were human. They yep. had nafs and mara. Amara, the some of them were hypocrites, were hypocrites, and we they were in 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 dog in in the Muslims' life, and they were hypocrites. They had bad nafs, like Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salud. He was the leader of the hypocrites, and he saw Rasulullah, and he uh, witnessed the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But although he denied secretly and he you know had a bad nafs and that is why the hypocrites in medina made plots against the muslims inside in medina itself yeah. and they were living amongst the sahaba but for the sahaba themselves we had some of them had or most of them had the second type nafsul lawama sayyiduna ali ibn abi talib for instance he used to you know blame himself he used to blame himself he used to talk with himself one of the narrations mentioned that sayyiduna ali ibn abi talib during the night he used to stand for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night holding his beard and crying in the qibla in the chamber itself he used to cry and he used to say ya dunya ghurri ghayri you know oh dunya why are you coming why are you chasing me yeah. go to somebody else you know, this is, the, this the, is Sayyidina Ali. Yes, you know the, the, the difference between us and Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah mm -hmm. that they were genuine. Mm -hmm. They will never just find the, uh, the bad actions as we are just human. Yeah. Let's say, when the Prophet وسلم, asked, mm -hmm. لما النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, uh, لما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, لن يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من نفسه وماله وولده. Mm -hmm. You, that your belief, your iman, will never, will never be perfect unless you love Rasulullah more than or better than your children, your money, and your own self. If it were me, I could just say, yes, now Rasulullah, I love you more than myself. As most of us would claim. Yes, <laughs> but Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, I know yes. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, yes. it's, it's, it's a great companion. Yes. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than my money, more than my children. 
But I'm sorry, I don't love you more than my own self. He was honest. Uh, yeah, he was honest, he was genuine. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like uh, 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 gave, gave him like an opportunity to review her, uh, his heart. And later on, the, the Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu said, Now, Rasulullah, I love you more than my own self. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Now, your iman is completed and perfect. So when you are genuine with yourself, when you know that you are doing mistakes, now you are going in the right path and you are trying to improve your relationship and to correct your bad actions. Just to review with the brothers and sisters, now we talked about the two types of nafs. The bad nafs, the bad one, and the other one, the one which is blaming you, you know? And if, when, when you have the, 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 the second type, and nafsu lawama, which is blaming you about committing the sins or even missing the good deeds, as Imam Muhammad mentioned, we can move now for the third type, which is al nafsu al mutmainna, the content nafs. Can you please talk with us about, tell us about the, the this type, the third type, nafsu mutmainna? This is the fact our aim in life is to reach this nafs. Mm -hmm. And if we start it by uh, nafsu al-ammara bisu and nafsu al uh, this is like uh, 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 these nafs or these two types preceding the best one that we are walking to. We want to reach this kind of nafs which is a nafsu, let's say the comfortable nafs. When you feel content that you are most close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's say that all acts of worship when you go to pray, or when you pray at your house, when you wake up to pray, and when you do siyan, you have to strive yourself. You have to exert some effort. This is the fact. When you wake up, uh, uh, let's say, at, uh, early in the morning to pray Salat al-Fajr, and when it is too cold, and you have to make wudu, and you have to pray, and maybe you didn't sleep enough, all these kinds of striving oneself, and also when you make siyan, you have to strive oneself when you abstain yourself from eating and drinking all the day long. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of striving oneself. The, the type of this nafs, when we say nafs al-mutma'inna, that you enjoy these actions. It is not just a burden. Yeah, I have to pray for, uh, for uh, rakahs now, so I make wudu really fast and pray for rakahs so that I get rid of this point. No, you have to enjoy. When you enjoy your relationship with Allah, when you enjoy your prayers, when you enjoy your fasting, when you, when you enjoy your remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now you have the best nafs. You know, you know, Imam, that's reminded me of one of the sayings of the scholars about Jannah. You know, we have two Jannah. We have two Jannah. And, and I'm pretty sure you may feel confused now. The Imam, we have one Jannah. No, we have two Jannah. Okay. The first one in dunya. And the first, the, the second one in the Akhirah, when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars said, مَن لَمْ يَذُقْ جَنَّةَ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ يَذُقْ, لم يذوق جَنَّةَ الْآخِرَةَ If you didn't taste the Jannah in the dunya itself, you will never be able to taste the Jannah in the Akhirah. Mm -hmm. So we can answer this question, what kind of Jannah we have in dunya imam? You know, they said, أَشَّوْقُ إِلَى اللَّهِ الشَّوْقُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالْأُنْسُ بِاللَّهِ To have longing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have a good relationship with Allah. And as Imam Muhammad mentioned, to feel happiness, to feel the inner peace when you have a, a relationship with Allah. It's not a burden. It's not, you know, something feel that you feel it, that's so difficult. I need to get rid of, you know, siyam. I need to get rid of salah. No, no, no. It's, some, it's something make you feel happy, make you, make you feel joy. Longing with Allah, longing to Allah that makes you feel better as a Muslim and come close to Allah. This is what we call it Jannah. And this is the meaning of uh, this prophetic saying, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Yeah, that he would, so, whatever he had in, the, in his life, he, he would rush to the yeah, Salah. Amrun hara ila salah. Yes, yes, yes. Arihna biha. Let's seek comfort, let's seek ease, you know, and peace and peace through the salah ya bila. This is what Rasulullah said. So let's do a practical, you know, steps to our brothers and sisters. Imagine, like the majority of Muslims, they have the, the second type of nafs, blaming one, you know, the, the nafs which feels regret and sorry when, when we commit sins or we, we miss something good. 
what are the practical steps that I need to do so I can reach to an nafsul mutmainna, which is the peak, which is the highest level. How can I reach to that? To plan for yourself. To make a plan for yourself. How okay. to worship Allah and how to improve your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, we usually say, إِلَّمْ تَشْغَلْ نَفْسَكَ بِالْخَيْرِ شَغَلَتْكَ بِالشَّرْ أو إِلَّمْ تَشْغَلْ نَفْسَكَ بِالْحَقِّ شَغَلَتْكَ بِالْبَاطِلِ So, if you, if, you, if, you, if you do not try to do something good, you will end up by doing something bad. So if you have, uh, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of people now ha uh, have uh, like long time and free time. If you just keep uh, following Facebook or following TV or something, well, you know, when you are uh, like overthinking, you will not think about something good. Mm -hmm. You are trying to do something bad. This is a nafsul amara to be so. That's why try to make a plan for yourself. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, maybe it doesn't work for some people, but I'm saying like, uh, uh, for example, is to make a plan for yourself. Okay, every day I'll do, I start my day, of course, by praying Salat al-Fajr. Write it down for yourself. I'm, I'm talking to everybody, including myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll I start my day by praying Salat al-Fajr. And then I uh, uh, do uh, Adhkar al-Sabah, morning remembrance. And it has a lot of benefits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from this uh, coronavirus, from this problem that made the whole world frantically, No, nobody can understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. We just... Seek the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to read some books in your field. Uh, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not a necessity to be in the, in the religion or something. Read some books in your field. And uh, gather your children to give them like advice or nasiha. Mm -hmm. And pray Salat al jamaah with your family. Now you are filling the space in your day. If you just leave it, let it go. You know, when you have free time, shaitan will come to whisper to you. But if you make a plan for yourself, how your day will go, now you are in the right path. You are coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are improving, you are building your relationship and building your house in the paradise, inshallah. We can add also one of the, the, the ways that you can follow to develop your a good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be surrounded with a, a, a righteous you know, friends, righteous companions. When it comes to that, when you have friends, they will help you. They will take you, they will let you, you know, uh, struggle more and more with your nafs to achieve your target by the end. Like to compete one another. Yes, so you will like to have that competition and also they will help you. We, we, we call that in the proverb in Arabic, as-sahibu sahib. So the, the good companion can, can pull you to the good way or the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something also can help you to improve yourself, to improve your nafs, to move it from the way of the shaitan, from the bad nafs, from the very worst type, which inshallah, which inshallah, I wish that we, we are not that type. And to improve yourself to be in the middle class or the second type, like al-lawama, yes. okay, to blame yourself, then don't stop by just blaming yourself and be in the comfort zone. No, yeah. you need to be on the third one. And most of us, alhamdulillah, we can feel that in Ramadan. Mm -hmm. You know, we can feel that. Ramadan, day by day, day by day, we build a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a good relationship with Allah, and you can find people till the end of Ramadan, they get close to that level, which is the third one, but most of people are after that, you know, the curve will go down again. Uh, this, this is, is the, yeah, this, this is, is the case. And this is the secret behind feeling comfortable during the month of Ramadan and so, Baraka as yeah, well. Yeah, some people may ask, why do I feel this feeling, this comfortable and this calm inside my heart in Ramadan? The answer simply is that you are doing something, you, you're not really doing it throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They are reciting Quran, doing remembrance, making siyam, and compete one another. You know, sometimes we call our friends, yes, I read uh, 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 two surahs of the Quran. No, I read two juz, I read one juz. I'm trying to make khatm, I'm trying to make khatm twice during the month of Ramadan. So competing one another and doing good, this is the secret behind feeling comfortable during the month of Ramadan. So the, the message for the brothers and sisters, instead of, you know, having the main concern, the main priority, is just to take care of your body, 
you know, is to keep your immune system in the in a good shape and to eat the best food and the best drink and have you know the 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 the, mo the, the, the most types of food. Uh, it's part of our religion. It's yeah. part of our religion, of course. But I I, I can't I I am again saying it's not the main concern. Yeah. You know, it's not the first priority. The first priority is to purify ourselves. Let's move from the area of evil, grudge, uh, 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 having envy, hatred, uh, 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 disobeying Allah to another area, which is caring with one another, loving one another, uh, having a good relationship with Allah. And enjoy, yes, enjoying the worship itself. Enjoying that. If you reach to that point, that you enjoy, that you feel the inner peace, that you love that, that you feel happy to come close to Allah, at that moment, I can tell you, you already started to reach to that level, which is an nafsu al mutmainna And Imam will, I, I wish that if you can end by reciting the, the last part of Surah Al-Fajr, which has this, the, the third type of nafs, inshallah. Okay. I wish that because we are, we, wallahi, we are looking for the reward, you know. Allah in this verse spoke about Jannah. That nafs mutma'inna will have Jannah, inshallah, definitely. Allah also will talk to the nafs mutma'inna and he will say, Udkhuli fi ibadi wa dukhuli jannati. jannati. Enter my Jannah with my mercy. Under, you know, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will reach to Jannah because you have the good nafs, the nafs mutma'inna, the righteous one. You reach to the level that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to listen to these verses with a beautiful voice for Imam Muhammad. Yahya, may Allah bless him. Allahumma ameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahi rahmanir rahim يا ايتها النفس المطمئنه ارجعي الى ربك راضيه مرضيه فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي جزاك الله خير امام بارك الله فيك Really, Wallahi, we enjoyed, you know, talking with you and sharing the time with everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. And Imam Muhammad, we are so happy to have you uh, here in Newport Ritchie. And inshallah, we are looking to have more and more, inshallah. But just my message to everyone, just keep the two pages, the page of the Facebook page of the Masjid Salam in Dunedin, and also the page of the Islamic Center of Newport Ritchie. And inshallah, we will give you the time for our next joint lecture, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with his mercy. Amen. And may Allah protect our children, our family members, and our wives. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to worship him Amen. and to show the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to elevate our Iman and to increase our Iman, to reach to that target, Al-Nafsul Mutma'inna, Allahumma Ameen. Excuse me, please, let yes. me just remind the uh, brother yes, and please. sisters that if you have, inshallah, any question, any inquiry, you can just keep it, inshallah, in the, in the comments, leave it in the comments, and we'll exactly. get back after this video to the comments, me and Imam Ahmed, and we'll, inshallah, write down these uh, answers for you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Inshallah, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.